SSDs offer superlative speed and durability, especially compared to hard disk drives. But is there a trade-off? The answer is not as straightforward as you might think. Hello, I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and this episode is all about how heat can affect your SSD's performance, whether it's worth adding extra cooling and some simple tips to keep temperatures under control in your or any system. Think we can get it all done in our characteristic five minutes? Let's go. NVMe SSDs typically operate safely up to 70 degrees Celsius. That's 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Many SSDs come with a protective process called thermal throttling if the drive breaches that threshold. If that happens, it slows down data transfer speeds to prevent overheating. While this protects the drive and surrounding components from heat damage, it can affect performance. Luckily, once the drive cools down again, it's right back to normal speed. SATA SSDs are lower in speed, but also in temperature. In most cases, they don't need any sort of heat sink or fan. Most drives have built-in smart temperature sensors. System monitoring tools or vendor software can let you monitor them. The Kingston SSD Manager is the most straightforward way to track a Kingston drive's temperature and overall health. The most important time to monitor a drive is under load. You can test this by running a workload which reflects your usage copying a large file, rendering a project, or playing a game. Monitor the temperature for 10 to 15 minutes. Hopefully, you see a plateau rather than a steady climb to the throttling threshold. Repeated performance dips at the same temperature typically indicate an SSD at its thermal limit. Grinding fans, random freezes or crashes, all signs of poor airflow, a chief enemy of thermal regulation. Improving airflow through your case is a simple way to keep your SSD cool. Good airflow lowers the system's ambient temperature. System placement is key. Your machine should be on a hard surface with ample clearance around its vents to facilitate airflow. Positive pressure, more intake than exhaust, helps keep dust out, but also maintains cooler air around your SSD. Mesh-fronted cases with unobstructed intake paths usually outperform closed designs. Be sure to regularly clean filters and vents so that dust doesn't build up and restrict airflow. Air cooling is simple, effective, and low maintenance. But for heavy or complex systems, liquid cooling can be quieter under load and more efficient in certain cases. Cable management can help avoid airflow blockage, Route your front panel and PSU cables behind the motherboard tray and keep the area in front of the board's M.2 slots clear to reduce heat buildup. Careful where you place your GPU and when possible, place your M.2 drive in a spot with the best airflow gap from the CPU. Don't forget about passive cooling like heat sinks and thermal pads. Many modern motherboards include M.2 heat sinks, which when installed correctly, do a good job. Thermal pads can help, but make sure they have full even contact to optimize their use. Dust insulates, so keep your system clean. We have a full video on how and when to clean your PC linked in the description. Your system isn't going to burst into flames if you don't have a heat sink or enough cooling. Thermal throttling exists to keep your components and the overall system from reaching a hazardous state, but it also keeps your system from operating at its best. Hopefully you've come away with some ideas about how to keep your system cooler so that you can get better performance for your buck. If you have any tips about cooling that I couldn't cover in five minutes, leave a comment below. See you next time with more DIY in five.